after the shocking reveal of Elon Musk as the new owner of the WWE last night on Raw, what does he have planned for his first episode of Smackdown Live? Hello guys, it's me, Bad Jokes, back at you once again with another video. And yep guys, today we've got episode number 2 of my Total Extreme Wrestling 2016 series, The McMahonless Universe. Yep, if you haven't seen the first episode, the McMahons are no longer owners of the WWE. Go back to the first episode to see why they've been forced out. But there is a new owner and his name is Elon Musk. He revealed himself at the end of Monday Night Raw last night in a very shocking turn of developments at the end of the show. And now we've got his first episode of Smackdown Live. So let's jump straight into it and let's see what is going to happen. In the opening segment of the night, Elon Musk, in a pre-recorded video message, announces that there's going to be a 10-man battle royal tonight, with the winner getting a WWE Championship match against Daniel Bryan at Elimination Chamber in a one-on-one -on -one match. And because this is a new start, because this is a new time, the 10 men in a battle royal will all be people who have never been WWE or Universal Champion. So it's a bit of a breakthrough battle royal, some could say. And the segment gets us a C minus. Little bit disappointing, but again, it's Elon Musk. He's still just developing into this new role that he's bought himself into. And so the only, only new, noteworthy report is that Elon Musk was very underwhelming. But he's going to get better, I promise you. Following that up, we have six men in the ring. It's the New Day, Big E and Xavier Woods, the Usos, Luke Gallows and Carl Anderson all talking about the fact that now Shane McMahon has left the company. There's no tag team champions here on SmackDown. So they all think that they should have the right to be the next SmackDown Live tag team champs. And a match is made for later on in the night between the three teams to determine who the new champions are going to be. And the segment again got us a C-. minus. Maybe would have expected a little bit better out of these three teams. Jimmy Uso is not suited to his gimmick. Neither is Jay apparently. So that's something else we're going to have to be changing before next week's Smackdown I should think. But the angle did get the crowd hotter. So that's very nice to see. And Jimmy is, is improving at his acting. And he's also learning to show more charisma. As is his brother. So that's very good. Finally, we get the first match of the night. And it's Asuka versus Mandy Rose. And in a bout that had subpar wrestling, Asuka of course gets the win in 8.5 minutes. Thanks to the Asuka lock. Mandy Rose was off her game and the announcing quality lifted the match as it should because we've got a new announced team for Smackdown Live. It is Corey Graves alongside the legend that is good old JR Jim Ross. So that is going to be the announcing team going forward for Smackdown and by next week there's going to be changes on the Raw announced team as well as Asuka got a C+. Plus for the match, but Mandy Rose got an E+. Plus. What on earth is going on there? Maybe might have to think about not using Mandy Rose in the ring quite as much if she's going to be carrying on getting segments like that. After the match, we see Charlotte Flair come down to save Asuka from a beatdown by Mandy Rose and Sonya Deville. The rating is a D+, plus, so that's very disappointing. Maybe don't use Mandy Rose or Sonya Deville as much as maybe what I was planning. And Sonya Deville's not suited to a gimmick. Sala, of course, looked fantastic. Asuka looked good. And Sonya Deville looked very underwhelming. So, yeah, we're going to move on from those segments very quickly. 
And then next up, it is that match for the SmackDown Live Tag Team Titles. It gets us a C plus as the Usos defeated the New Day and the club in 17 minutes 29. And it was an, an elimination style match. The club got eliminated first and then the Usos pinned the New Day to win the SmackDown Live Tag Team Titles. Kofi Kingston was at ringside for the New Day. He did some very good work. Big E was visibly tiring by the end. It was a longer match than maybe what he likes. Luke Gallows was off his game. Luke Gallows was also visibly tiring. And Xavier Woods and Big E, of course, have great chemistry, as do the Usos. So C+, new tag team champions. Be interesting to see where the Usos go from here. Following that, Becky Lynch is in the ring. She's calling out Ronda Rousey. And they get into a bit of a brawl just to hype up their upcoming WrestleMania main event match. Just a little bit more. This segment gets us a B+, which I'm very, very happy with. The angle got the crowd hotter. Becky Lynch looked good. But Ronda Rousey performed poorly. Little bit disappointing with that. But the storyline has gained heat. So that is the main thing I think you can say. Now we've got what should be a dream match. Rey Mysterio versus Jeff Hardy. But the match is cut very short. In fact it only goes 4 minutes 48. When the match descended into chaos. After Andrade Cien Almas gets involved. Beating up Rey Mysterio. Jeff Hardy tries to hold him back. Before walking off. And so Andrade is not suited to his gimmick. Rey Mysterio had an in-ring performance of B. Jeff Hardy got a C. Maybe this might be a match we see at some point for real in the future. But this has got the Rey Mysterio slash Andrade storyline started. And then following this, R-Truth is in the ring. He's waiting for who is going to answer his United States Open Challenge. And the man that does answer it is Eric Young from Sanity. He wants a shot at the US title. He thinks that maybe tonight could be the night for him to make an impact. The segment gets us a D+. Can't really expect too much more than that, I think you can say. The match itself gets us a C- as our truth defends the US title with a what's up see in a match that lasted 12 minutes 57 the announcing quality lifted the match R-Truth had an in-ring performance of D Eric Young had an in-ring performance of D plus so not the best so maybe we're kind of lucky to get a C minus out of that match following that it's time for the 10 man battle royal with the winner getting a shot at Daniel Bryan's WWE Championship at Elimination Chamber. And as you can see, it's a whole host of people here who have never been WWE Champion. There's Aiden Inglis, Andrade, Cesaro, Harper, Kofi Kingston, Mustafa Ali, Rowan, Rusev, Samoa Joe and Selton Benjamin. And in a match that goes 13 minutes 10 seconds... Kofi Kingston gets the win, last eliminating Rusev, but Samoa Joe did dominate the match, getting the most eliminations. So it's a very good showing for Samoa Joe, but Kofi Kingston is the one going on to Elimination Chamber. Can Kofi Mania run wild? Can he win the WWE title at Elimination Chamber? The match gets us a C plus rating, which I'm quite happy with for a Battle Royal. Um, I normally don't do that well with Battle Royals. So to get a C plus, I'm quite comfortable with that. Aiden Inglis seemed off his game. And Andrade Cien Almas is not suited to his gimmick. And as you can see, that has started off a New Day versus Defenders of the Earth type storyline. So that's going to be interesting over the next few weeks. And then we're taken backstage just to a short little segment where Asuka is thanking Charlotte Flair for her help earlier tonight to ward off that attack. Now it is time for the main event of the night. 
It is John Cena teaming with AJ Styles versus Daniel Bryan and Shinsuke Nakamura. The match gets us a B- rating, which is a very good rating for the last match of the night. John Cena and AJ Styles are defeated by Daniel Bryan and Shinsuke Nakamura in 18 minutes 24 when Nakamura pins AJ Styles with a running single leg high knee strike aka the Kinshasa and so Daniel Bryan and Nakamura have absolutely zero chemistry as partners not going to be using them again so, and then AJ Styles got an in-ring performance of B- minus. John Cena got a B Nakamura and Bryan both got C's and the Nakamura versus John Cena storyline has advanced and has gained some heat. After the match, Kofi Kingston comes out, he gets right in Daniel Bryan's face and they have a stare down to end the show. So that's Kofi Kingston showing Daniel Bryan that he is properly up for their match at Elimination Chamber. And that is where the show ends. Let me know. If you think Kofi Kingston is going to get the win at Elimination Chamber, will he win his first ever WWE Championship? And then, as you can see behind my head, the show has got a B- rating. I'm quite happy with that. I'm quite content with that, if I'm quite honest. Wasn't expecting that after the poor start to the show. And that is where we are going to leave it for tonight, people. If you've enjoyed that video, please do subscribe down below. Follow me on Twitter at twitter.com slash badjokesgaming. Follow me on Twitch at twitch.tv slash badjokesgames. I stream at Football Manager five times a week over on Twitch. So go and give me a follow over there as well. And I'll be back next Monday with episode three of the Total Extreme Wrestling 2016 Muckmanless Universe. Bye.